If it seems like I've been talking about apostolic leadership a lot lately, it's, it's probably because I have. And the reason I have is twofold. One, I've been reading through the book of Acts over and over and very slowly. And it's hard not to see uh, descriptions of apostolic leadership and the results of apostolic leadership. And I think in the church today, we need and want both. Also, the other reason is uh, I am teaching apostolic leadership at Every Nation Seminary. And so in developing that course, uh, I have that topic, that idea on my mind. And when I talk about apostolic in that context, I am talking about expansion, ministries that expand to new territories uh, and, and, and take the gospel where it has not been, but also uh, ministry that strengthens what is there. So I want to look at Acts 16 and look at five descriptions of apostolic ministry, five descriptions of apostolic leadership. And if if something comes into a local context and calls itself apostolic and it doesn't look like this, then maybe it's not really apostolic. Maybe we need to rethink that one. But here we go. Verse 1, Acts chapter 16. Paul came also to Derbe and to Lystra. A disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but his father was a Greek. He was well spoken of by the brothers at Lystra and Iconium. Paul wanted Timothy to accompany him, and he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in those places, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. As they went on their way through the cities, they delivered to them for observance the decisions that had been reached by the apostles and elders who were in Jerusalem. So the churches were strengthened in the faith, and they increased in numbers daily. There's so much in this passage, but I want to focus on some leadership principles. Okay, what do these apostolic leaders produce and what does it look like? The first one, we start off in verse one and we see Timothy is a disciple, but we know that later on Timothy becomes one of the key trusted leaders on Paul's team. Uh, verse three, it says, Paul wanted Timothy to accompany him. So then we get into this whole thing about having him circumcised. That's a different subject and some pretty rich theological ideas in that and missiological principles as well. But let's just leave it that Paul takes Timothy from this idea of a disciple to a leader. And I would say the first evidence of apostolic ministry is leaders are developed. Uh, apostolic ministry, uh, I'm trying to see it as a gift to the church, not as a position or a place of authority, but a gift. What does that gift do for the church? What is, how does that gift help the church? The first thing apostolic ministry does, it develops leaders. Leaders are developed. And how that happened is what we used to call in the Philippines OJT on the job training. He wanted Timothy to go with him. It wasn't that Timothy was sitting off somewhere in a classroom. And if you're watching this in a classroom, that's fine. A uh, classroom is good, that's, uh, that, but it's not complete. There was something about taking him with him on the ministry journey, on the apostolic expansion journey that was vital to the development of Timothy Disciple into Timothy the leader. Secondly, we find that theology is clarified. And, and what happened here in verse four, uh, they were going through all the cities and bringing theological clarity that was decided a chapter before in Acts 15, the nature of salvation. Do you have to become, if you're a Gentile, do you have to become culturally a Jew? In order to become a Christian, do you have to keep all of the Jewish uh, traditional laws and all of that? It was a big debate with the apostles and elders in chapter 15. And when they made the decisions not to make it difficult for these Gentiles coming to faith, then Paul and others were commissioned to go city by city and clarify the theology. Apostolic ministry develops leaders. Apostolic ministry clarifies theology. And often today, there are people who are calling themselves apostolic all over the world. They've got cards to prove it. They printed business cards and they have titles on their, on their Facebook uh, profile page saying they're apostles. So certainly they are, but, but theology becomes confusing. Uh, or theology becomes some new revelation that nobody's ever heard of except for them. What this apostolic ministry did in scripture, they clarified the theology that was already agreed upon by the collective. An apostle 
a singular by himself apostolic leader, if they're bringing new doctrine and theology that hasn't previously been part of what Christianity is, then I wouldn't listen to them for another second. So real biblical apostolic ministry, leaders are developed, theology is clarified, and then we find uh, thirdly, in verse 5, so the churches were strengthened in the faith. Churches are strengthened. When apostolic ministry gets involved, because theology is clarified, because leaders are developed, then churches are strengthened. And that is a twofold part of a church getting stronger, is having deeper theological roots and more developed leaders. There's a human side and there's a spiritual side. There's the, the believing right and there's this empowering leaders. And then fourthly, in that verse 5, it says, Not only were the churches strengthened in the faith, they increased in numbers daily. Apostolic ministry not only expands the borders of the kingdom, but within a church, the disciples, the numbers, the people getting saved, that increases. So what are we saying? What does apostolic ministry look like? What is the fruit of it? Leaders are developed. Theology is clarified. Churches are strengthened. Numbers increase. And then finally, we end with this. So they're going all throughout this apostolic team. And then we get to verse 10. At the end of verse 10, it says that um, they concluded, this apostolic team, Paul and others, that God had called us to preach the gospel to them, talking about in Macedonia. And finally, and this is really the core of it, apostolic ministry, the gospel is preached. There's gospel preaching. Um, it's it's the, the grace of God, the message of God, the salvation of God, uh, the gospel, the good news. So for apostolic expansion, apostolic strengthening, apostolic growth, apostolic leaders, uh, clear theology, we need gospel preaching. Apostolic teams and apostolic ministers are to preach the good news of the gospel.